Hi everyone, welcome back to our um, Fiat Faith Formation Series brought to you by Youth of St. Anthony. Today we have with us Brother Simon Ho, um, who is a seminarian with us uh, from San Francisco Xavier Major Seminary. But before we go into the topic and before he start talking, let's invite the Holy Spirit to join us and let's pray the prayer. Let's mark ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same Spirit to relish what is right, and always rejoice in your consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so um, I did a brief, very, very brief intro of our brother. So maybe over to you, brother. Share with us which year of your studies are you in, and uh, let us hear, uh, hear your voice. Come over to you, brother. Thank you, Paul. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Simon Hall. I'm a seminarian with the Archdiocese of Singapore. I'm in my seventh year of formation out of a total of eight years. So next year, God willing, will be my final year of formation. So this year, um, in the seminary, we are studying all kinds of various subjects related to the sacred sciences, theology, scripture, church history, you know, and various other pastoral subjects like how to give a homilies and things like that. So our life here in the seminary right now is very busy. At the same time, you also have pastoral experiences. So this year, I'm attached to the Church of the Risen Christ. But I think we all know currently it's the COVID situation. So there has not been much opportunities for me to go down to the parish. I think for many of you as well, there's not been much opportunities for you to go to the parish to be around friends and, and other people as well. But I think it's very wonderful. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity to come uh, over the online platform. We give thanks to God for this wonderful gift to be able to share something about our faith so that we can inspire one another and help one another despite whatever situation we are facing with the help of Mary, our mother, and all the saints to help us to grow in our relationship with God amidst all these difficulties. Because our relationship with God can never take a holiday. Let no pandemic stop it. Well said. Wow, indeed. Learning how to preach and you are getting my attention, brother. <laughs> Alright, so um, today, today we are talking about um, a prayer that we have been exposed to. Some of us are familiar. Some of us are not. Today, we're talking about Save Regina and the prayer that um, we have heard, be it end of rosary, at our night prayer, or even end of the mass. We, we came across. But today, we want, to, we want to dive in to know a bit more, even the history, how did the prayer came about. Can you give us a history of this prayer, Salve Regina? How did it come about? Is there anybody involved? Yes. Bring us through, brother. Okay. Um, the Salve Regina, or in English, more commonly known as the Hail Holy Queen, its history goes all the way back to about the 11th and 12th centuries in Christianity. The actual composer is not known for certain, but it has from the earliest times been associated with this particular person called Herman the Lame, recently beatified Blessed Herman the Lame. And there's a very interesting part to his story. We tend to think of composers as people who are, you know, who are wonderfully gifted in music, la, doing that as their main job in a sense. But Herman, when he was born, he was born with various disabilities back in the 11th century. And his early childhood, he had a disease that left him crippled. So as a result of these circumstances, Blessed Herman actually found it difficult to read and write. And historians tell us that possibly he could hardly speak. So how did this man, who has such disabilities, write the Salve Regina with such a beautiful words and melody that's associated with it? What we know is that when he was seven years old, his parents found it so difficult to, put, to, to actually uh, bring him up any further that they put him in the Benedictine monastery and let the monks educate him. 
Over there, with the help of the grace of God and a strong devotion to Mary, as well as the help of the monks, Herman overcame the obstacles and eventually became a learned historian, a mathematician, and even a poet. He was well known as a historian of the early centuries of the church. At one point in his life, towards the end, Herman became blind. And it was interesting because it was at this stage that we have records of him composing hymns and poetry. And in all likelihood, the Salve Regina that we sing today, the Hail Holy Queen, was composed by Blessed Herman precisely when he was blind. So amidst the difficulties and challenges he faced in his life, he never let all these difficulties stop him from a relationship with God, from praising God, because of the close connection he has with Mary, because of the close connection he has with the Word of God. And this is something I think important for us as well to remember because we are gifted in many ways and we tend to think that we serve God best in our strengths. If I'm good at singing, I will want to sing to the Lord. If I'm good at playing musical instruments, I'll volunteer and join in the band to play drums or piano or organ for the Lord. But Herman shows us that even in our weaknesses, even in our struggles and our difficulties, we can still be praising God. And he gave us such a beautiful piece of work, the Salve Regina, which is very rich in its meaning and even to this day continues to direct our own devotion and our own way of approaching God and through the intercession of Mary. So this is the brief history of how it was written in that sense. How did it enter into the usage of the church? We know that as uh, Paul mentioned, it's used in night prayer currently. Its introduction into the night prayer came around the 13th century by the Dominicans. They use it at the end of night prayer, but why did they do that? They have a fry at that point in time, one of the brothers who was tormented by an evil spirit. And the brothers then turn to Mary and says, we have to ask Our Lady to help and pray for our brother so that he will not be tormented by the evil spirit each night. And they got together and started singing the Salve Regina. Every night, implore the protection of Mary for their brother. And through the singing of the Salve Regina, this brother of theirs was freed from the grip of the evil one. And from then on, they popularized this and added it into part of the night prayer of the church. And from the Dominicans, it spread onwards to the rest of the world. So we look at the history of this prayer. It is a very interesting prayer hymn to Our Lady, because we are so familiar with many of the other hymns of Mary, like, you know, On This Day, or Beautiful Mother, you know, all these very sweet hymns that sings of how gentle, how loving Mary is, and that's true, Mary is very gentle, Mary is very loving. But in the early part of the church, in the 11th, 13th centuries, the prayer to Mary was not just how sweet and how lovely she is, but how she is our protector, how she is our help, how she intercedes for us, how she protects us amidst all the difficulties and challenges we face in our Christian life. So in a sense, I liken it to a kind of battle hymn for us. Right? Of course, today we don't go into battle and says we are Christians, we fight against other people. We, we want to create peace because that's what God came also to bring unity to the whole human race. But we cannot deny the fact that being Christians, we have to fight against sin sin that we are very familiar in our own lives. We have to fight against also, you know, what our bishop talks about, relativism. The worldview that is very different from the gospel values. We have to bring the gospel values into society, how to love our enemies, how to be kind to one another. What does it mean about Christian sexuality and everything else associated with our faith? And those are not easy. It is a battle in that sense. And the hymn Salve Regina reminds us precisely that Mary stands with us and prays with us and helps us in this battle. Thank you. Brother, you, you have been talking about the hymn, the hymn, the hymn. And um, you started off saying that Salve Regina, English is called Hail Holy Queen. Maybe at this juncture we can go into the hymn, maybe the words. It started off with Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Like what you have mentioned, many hymns are very gentle, very sweet. 
but this is like a protector. Um, can you share with us why Hail Holy Queen and how is this song um, speak of the role of our mother as the intercessor? Right. So we begin by praising Mary. We can be afraid sometimes that when we praise Mary, we are somehow detracting from the praise that's given to God, as if God is the only one we should praise. But then if we are worried about that, we need to remember who Mary is, is not because of her own efforts alone. Remember the other prayer that we have in our, our, to Our Lady, the Hail Mary, full of grace. She is full of grace because God has graced her. God has given her all the gifts. So when Mary is praised, we are praising God who created and graced Mary so that she can become who she is. So when we are praising Mary, we are praising God. Just as we read in the Gospel of Matthew, when Jesus told the disciples, when people see the good that you do, they may praise your Father in heaven. And this is what precisely happens. Whenever we praise Mary, Mary directs that praise back to God. We are praising God for what He has done and how Mary has cooperated with God's grace. And there's an interesting title there, which maybe today we don't think very much about. The title, Queen. But Queen is very powerful reflection. I would like to offer two points of reflection for us. One is this. We know from our own faith experience that in, on earth, human beings are the creatures that God created with the greatest dignity because we are created in the image and likeness of God. Compared to all other animals, compared to all the plants and all the minerals, we are at the pinnacle of the visible creation. But we also know that God created angels, pure spiritual beings, and they are in some sense, more glorious than we are because they have, you know, uh, they are pure spirits, they have a keener intellect, they have greater power because God has gifted them as angels, as spirits, with the power. But the interesting thing is this, the queenship of heaven and of earth was not given to any other angel. It is given to Mary, a woman, a woman who is a sister of our own race, she is set as queen over all creation. Why? Because Jesus, the Son of God, chose to be born of Mary. And because Jesus became man, he shared in a human nature like all of us, all of us human beings are raised up to a dignity that is even higher than the angels. And Mary, as the mother of Jesus, she becomes the mother of God and therefore she is also given this dignity as queen of all of creation. So when we highlight Mary as queen, we are also acknowledging the wonderful thing that God has done, not just in her life, but also in all of our lives. We have been raised up to a great dignity because God became man. And in baptism, we share in the very spirit of Jesus. We are made sons and daughters of God. We are raised to a dignity higher than the angels. In fact, in the letter to the Hebrews, it says, the angels are ministering spirits sent out in God's service for the sake of those destined to receive salvation. And who are those destined to receive salvation? You and I. The angels are made by God now to serve us, to bring us closer to Jesus, to bring us closer to God. So that in heaven, if we look at the book of Revelation, angels and all the saints join in praise of God. That is the dignity we are given. We are not just bound to this earth. We are raised up to the heights of heaven. But there's another meaning to the word queen as well. If we look at the Middle Ages where the title queen, kings, and all this were applied, kings and queens are not just people who sit on the thrones and just you know, get eat and get fat and control the empire and the realm. Kings and queens protect their people. Kings and queens are supposed to look after the welfare of the people. And that's where the title of Mary as queen also points to her role as our intercessor, 
she prays for us. And if we look at the how the Salve Regina, the Hail Holy Queen proceeds, after we say Hail Holy Queen Mother of Mercy, after we greet her, we turn to where we are in our lives. We are in a valley of tears. We are children of Eve, crying, mourning where we are. Of course, that itself reminds us of the book of Genesis, where because of the sin of Adam and Eve, human beings were driven out of paradise. We lost the original holiness and that relationship with God. And as part of the consequences of that, God said to Adam, you shall till the soil with the broil of your, the sweat on your head, you will, you will have to till to feed yourselves. And of course, sin, death, suffering, pain entered the world. And the world that we are living in, we are familiar with difficulties and challenges and sorrows and pain. But then we turn in the prayer to ask Mary to turn then our gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us and pray for us. And that's the main bulk of the hymn itself, asking Mary to intercede and to pray for us. And some of you may wonder, hey, can't we just pray to God directly ourselves? And indeed, we can and we should and we must pray to God directly. But that's the mystery of how God created human beings and the church. We don't just pray for ourselves, we also pray for one another. I think you will ask Paul to pray for you, ask your priest to pray for you, ask your parents to pray for you, ask your good friends to pray for you. We pray for one another. And that's how God has intended us as Christians to help one another in our journey to grow in holiness. In fact, if we look at the Lord's Prayer that Jesus gave us, our Father who art in heaven, we don't pray, my Father in heaven, give me this day my daily bread, forgive me my sins. We pray for everybody. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. That's the beauty of the Christian life in our Catholic community of faith, that we are in one big family where we are not alone. We don't just pray for ourselves. We pray for one another. And we don't just have the fellow Christians in the community that we see here on earth praying for us. We have the communion of saints in heaven as well. Our Mother Mary in heaven, the saints in heaven continue to pray for us. And there's a special role of Mary to pray for us because we see in the scriptures as well when Jesus hang on the cross in John's gospel, there were two people at the foot of the cross as particularly highlighted. John, the beloved disciple, as well as Mary, the mother of Jesus. And what did Jesus say to Mary and to John as he died or about to die on the cross? He told John, this is your mother. And through John, we all become the sons and daughters of Mary. And he told Mary, his mother, now these are your children. This is your son. And as a mother, that's where she got the role of interceding and praying for all of us. And there's something beautiful about mothers praying for us. Mothers are very able to sense their children's needs. When the children are in need, mothers sense it and they come and look after and care for their child. Mary has the same role. Sometimes we do not know what we truly need. In fact, in, our own, in my own journey of growth as well, I'm discovering who I am each day, especially to the trials and difficulties of what I experience in my life. I grow to learn more about myself and what I truly need. And Mary, who is our mother, she sees us and she loves us dearly and she sees what we need and she prays for what we need, even though we may not be fully aware of that. And there are beautiful stories about Mary's intercessory role. I want to share first one story from this Father Stephen Shire. Father Stephen Shire has just recently passed away in the early part of this year, but he had a near-death experience in October 1985. He's a priest in the United States. He was driving on the highway and for some reason there was a head-on collision and he was thrown out of the car. But as he got thrown out from the stories, from the medical records, a part of his scalp was actually ripped off and the doctors gave him very low chance of survival, only 15% chance. His parish was praying for him. The other Christians around from other denominations and churches were praying for him. 
And despite all odds, he recovered. He survived. And he had no problem with speech. He has no problem with walking. So it's all attributed. He attributed it all to prayer. But after he recovered, one day as he was celebrating Mass, a particular memory of what happened after the accident came back to him. Because after the accident, when he was losing consciousness, he became aware that he was before the judgment seat of God. And there was Jesus going through his life with him, showing him at different moments, okay, what are the sins he has committed which he has not confessed. Because Father Shai says, I got lots of excuses for the sins I've committed. I always thought I got plenty of time to make my confession. But there he found himself in the accident before the judgment seat of God. And in the presence of the Lord Jesus, who is all truth, every excuse he said that he has prepared for all his sins disappeared. And when Jesus showed him all this, he says, where do you think you have chosen to go through your life and how you have lived your life? And Father Stephen Shire says, honestly, I deserve hell. And Jesus says, yes, that's right. You have lived your life for yourself. You have chosen to go to eternal damnation by your acts. To hell you will go there for. And Father Stephen Shah has accepted this judgment of God. But at that moment, there was a woman's voice that cried out, Son, will you please spare his life and his immortal soul? And Father Stephen Shai heard Jesus reply, Mother, he's been a priest for 12 years for himself and not for me. Let him get the punishment he deserves. And this woman replied, But son, if we give him special graces and strength, then let's see if he bears fruit. If not, your will be done. There was a short pause, after which Father Stephen Shai heard Jesus say, Mother, he is yours. And that's how he recovered. Of course, for him, he says, after this near-death experience and this encounter of judgment, he turned his life around. He became a very different priest. He became very devoted to Mary. What was interesting was, after he recovered and all this, as he shared his story, the paramedics who came to his rescue on the highway after the accident also spoke to him and says, do you know, Father, what you were trying to say in your semi-conscious state after the accident, you were trying to pray the Hail Mary. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. What was beautiful in the story is Father Stephen Shire recognized what his sin at the judgment seat of God entailed. He didn't even dare to ask for mercy. But Mary, his mother, came and intervened and says, to ask Jesus, give him mercy, let him have a bit more time and see whether he will bear fruit. And it's the same in all our lives. Very often in our own journey, we don't even know what we truly need. Or sometimes before the holiness of God, we may be afraid even because of our sinfulness, because of the choices we have made, or because of the image of God that we have had growing up in our life. And the beautiful thing is Mary knows all this and she is not bothered by all this. She prays for us as her own children and begs the Lord to give us the graces that we need. That is a powerful role, having Mary as an intercessor. And we say that that's from Father Stephen Shire. My own experience, I've also had little experiences, not as dramatic as Father Stephen Shire, no near that experience. But there was a point in my life when I was also indulged in sinning, growing up. The challenge of pornography was there. And there was a beautiful experience once when I closed the computer. Now, earlier on at that point, I was looking at something about Mary, related to Mary. But I was drifting around as well. I looked at other sites, which I shouldn't be looking at. Mysteriously, I closed, okay, I closed the computer because I had to get something else done. And we know certain sins, they stick with us. It's hard for us to get rid of by ourselves. And it was a sin that I had returned to quite a few times in the past. But mysteriously, as I closed my computer, I went about my activities for that day, I realized deep in my heart that there was a change 
something about pornography was no longer enticing me. And I could not explain what it was until later when I connected the dots and I realized that that was the prayer of Mary because earlier on I was looking for some materials, reading some holy materials about Our Lady and how she is our intercessor, how she prays for us and obtains graces for us even we do not even ask the Lord for the graces. And I realized that Mother Mary had obtained for me something that I did not even dare to ask or deserve from the Lord. And that is a powerful intercession of Mary. So if you are struggling in any areas, whether it's a sinfulness in your life or whether it's in any other matters, in a relationship with your family, in your school, questions about yourself, yes, we pray to God and ask God for the gifts that we need, the graces that we need. But let us not neglect to turn to Mary and ask her to pray for us. She is our mother. She sees us. She knows what we need. She loves us. She prays for us. And in this prayer of the Salve Regina, that is what it does. We entrust the difficulties we experience in life in this valley of tears. Whether it is diabolical effects or whether it is normal human interactions, sickness, pain, sufferings, disappointments in life, the wounds that we carry in our hearts, Mary can pray for us and we ask her to help us to go through this journey of life. Wow, I felt that I just sat through catechism class with personal sharing. Wow, I'm, I am moved. Brother, maybe you can guide us through, we we'll go back to the hymn again. Mm. In the beginning of the, 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 the prayer, talk about Mother Mary, but at the end, he spoke about the blessed fruit of thy womb, which is Jesus. It, it linked very nicely with the first talk that we had with um, Father Eugene Lee, talking about we go to Jesus through Mary, and that's the role of Mary, because she will direct us to Jesus. Can you share with us, why did Blessed Herman include Jesus at the last part in his in this hymns? Jesus is included in the last part of this hymn because that's the central, most important thing in our Christian faith, is the person of Jesus. I remember quite a few years ago, I had the privilege of meeting then Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. That was about 2001 who became Pope Benedict XVI. I was meeting him with a group of young people. We asked him, what should we do as young people to evangelize? He says only one thing, bring people to Jesus and leave them at Jesus' feet. Jesus will teach them everything. For Pope Benedict, he, I remember him saying also, the central person the central thing in our Christian faith is Jesus. A relationship with Jesus gives us a relationship to God the Father. It is Jesus by his passion on the cross, his blood that saves us. So Jesus is central for our Christian faith, why we are Christians in the first place. And we see it beautifully put into this hymn. Show unto us, we ask Mary, the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. Remember just now I said in the earlier part with all the sorrows and all the pains and all the difficulties, we tend to think of when we ask God, help us with all this pain and difficulties, Lord, take this pain away. Give me this that I think I need. Give me this. We ask for things. But in this beautiful prayer to Mary, after saying that we are all in sorrows and difficulties, we only ask her for one thing to show us Jesus, which means to keep us in a relationship with Jesus, despite all that we are going through, whether it's joyful or sorrowful, because even in moments of joy, we can forget about God. We can think that it's by our own efforts, that's why we have achieved anything. In our sorrows and difficulties, we can blame God. But we ask Mary to show us the fruit of your womb, Jesus. 
amidst all our difficulties, amidst all of life, challenges and joys, difficulties and sorrows, to keep us close to Jesus. And we look at it, Mary and Jesus, in terms of the human relationship, mother and son, that's the closest human relationship naturally occurring on earth. If we draw close to Mary, Mary will not keep us to herself, but she always show us and point us back to Jesus. Because that is what her role as mother has been given to her by her son. And if we have Jesus, then we have everything we need. Because Jesus tells us in the Gospels, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He doesn't promise us that as Christians, we will have a life of luxury, that we will have all the good things of this world. He promises, in fact, the cross. He promises us persecutions and difficulties. But through all this, united to Jesus, who is our life, who is our intimate friend, we will truly have everything we need. And we ask Mary to show us. It's also asking Mary to help us to see that Jesus truly is our treasure. Because so often our eyes can be blinded by other things that we see in front of us. And we ask Mary to help us to have a real, to see truly what is most important in our lives. Thank you. Well, you have answered a lot of my queries. Maybe I do a quick sum up. First, through the story of uh, Blessed Herman, we will only know that God is strong when we are weak. We need to be vulnerable. We need to be helpless. Then we know that actually we cannot depend on ourselves. We cannot be so self-centered. Everything comes from Him. Number two, no matter how sinful, how weak, or whatever that we are going through, Mother Mary is the constant that will always be there praying for us and will be pleading for us on our behalf. No matter what prayer we have, whatever intention we have, we can go to Mother Mary. Um, in this particular prayer, um, Salve Regina, it ends with Mother Mary still direct and points us to Jesus, which is the ultimate goal of every Christian. And to Jesus, we will, re we will return and yeah, we will go to the foot of Jesus and Jesus will take care of the rest of things. Yes, that's what I hear from you and your stories are very inspiring. Yeah, so um, any more things to share? If not, we will meet our youth on Friday. Yeah, let's do that. Let's meet the youths. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think I think they, they, they will feel the same as me, wanting to ask you a lot of questions. Okay, so um maybe brother you can you can close this session for us um with a prayer or even if you want to sing for us this hymn. We pray together. Let us bless ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you for giving us your mother, Mary, to be our mother also. To pray for us, to intercede for us amidst all the challenges and difficulties of life we face and encounter. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to listen to the prayers of your mother for us, who prays for what we need even when we do not know it ourselves. And give us the grace that she prays for us, so that we may draw closer in our relationship with you and cling on to you as our Lord, as our God, as our most intimate friend and lover. And we end off by singing the Salve Regina as we ask Mary to pray with us and to pray for us, to lead us to Jesus through the challenges of life. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Ducedo, 
et des nostra salve. At te clamamus, ex oles filii eve, at te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hoc lacrimarum vale. Eia ergo, ad vocata nostra, he lost to us misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesum benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, O oh, 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 Fiat Formation Series brought to you by Youth for Anthony. Thank you. Thank you.